I tried over 60 keyboards last year, so you don't have to. Why? So you don't have to? Well, do you really want to be the guy that tried over 60 keyboards? No, no, no. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, if you looked at 60 keyboards, then what keyboard do I buy? Well, well, well. Howdy, hey. I'm Hippiotech, and you've come to the right place. In my quest to find the best keyboards, I've made a lot of keyboard videos, so I'm going to be showing you my favorite keyboards of 2023, but not only that, I'll show you my favorite switches and keycaps as well. But wait, I'll also mention some things that aren't worth getting, so stick around. But first, let's start with some rules. All of the keyboards must be in stock, right now or soon. They're keyboards that I've tried, they must be hot swappable, and they must be very interesting. Now something worth noting is that with custom keyboards, everything is preference, so a keyboard that I like might not be a great fit for you, but you also might prioritize different features. So first I'm going to start with some basic recommendations and some things I find interesting, then I'll move on to switches and keycaps, and then I'll tell you about the super budget, right after you focus on budgeting that subscribe button. Don't worry, you'll get an extra howdy hey. Now, last year, just like every year, I did look at some Keychron keyboards. And normally, Keychron keyboards are my go-to recommendation for anyone. Now, why is this, you might ask? Well, it's actually a little bit more complicated because Keychron has gotten very busy over the last year. Typically, they're what I call the good enough keyboard because they're good enough for almost everyone. Their keyboards aren't spectacular, they won't blow you out of the water, but they do carry some of the basic features that are good enough. Now, I'm specifically talking about their Q series of keyboards, because they have some other weird stuff and so many different layouts and options. Oh my- They also have a Q Pro and now a Q Max series, which I'll be looking at later this year. But their Q series of boards is just simple aluminum keyboards that start at 135 for bare bones and like 150 for built. Now, here's where it gets interesting though, because Keychrons are keyboards that really need to be modded. And with a few simple tricks, this can become this. Now, Keychron boards are hot swappable, they support VIA, which is a really nice to use software, and really the main con is they're just a bit more expensive than some other stuff that's gonna be on this list. Now I know what you're thinking, you're thinking, Hippio, that's still too expensive. Well then don't even get me started on their Mac series that they just released that starts at 209 bucks, because uh, you're not gonna like that. Speaking of things you're not gonna like, you know how I mentioned earlier I was gonna talk about things I didn't like this year when I was making videos? Well, the GMMK Pro was definitely one of them. Now don't get me wrong, it's fine. It is one of the keyboards of all time. However, in 2023, they were selling it for 350 bucks, which is a price you should never pay for the GMMK Pro. As of right now, it's dropped to 234 for the fully built version, but that's still not really worth it, honestly. Now, a lot of the keyboards in this list have one thing in common. They're in stock and available. However, this is the special bonus section of the list where I'm gonna mention things that would be really great if they were in stock. Now, it's undeniable that my favorite keyboard of 2023 was the Zoom 75. It just did so much right. Like, it had foam, it had foam, it had stabilizers, it had foam. All jokes aside, if you built this thing out with the right switches, like any other keyboard, of course, it sounded like heaven. I said it, there I said it. Now, zoom boards are really elusive in that they're generally ran as group buys. However, as of filming this video, the Zoom 75 is technically in stock, albeit at a more expensive price. Now, some people absolutely love waiting months for the product that they wanna buy, but personally, it's not my thing. But just listen to this. Some honorable mentions of keyboards that might be in stock soon are the QK series and the Neo series of keyboards. They're pretty great, but they're often group buys. Also, my second favorite keyboard of the year, the Rainy 75, is technically a pre-order right now, but if you're watching this video in maybe March or April, it will be available in stock. And the best part, it's $100 cheaper than the alternatives. Oh, and did I mention it's fully built? This keyboard kind of just broke all other keyboards for me and that it's wireless, it has good latency, it has foams, but you don't need to use the foams. It just doesn't have as many options of like switches or stuff like that. But if you're really basic and you like a 75% keyboard and linear switches, this keyboard is genuinely insane. You can check out my video down below. Also, this is the one time I'm gonna break my own rule. My friend Barrett Creative is running his wooden keyboard sale right now for the wooden KL90s. These keyboards are incredibly unique and he's one guy that makes them himself in California. So it's kind of a true group buy, like the reason you would do a group buy. They're on the expensive side, but just listen to this. Now, it wouldn't be a year of Hippiotech videos without some weird budget keyboards. And 
that keyboard was entirely stock. Now, remember earlier when I said keyboards are entirely preference? This is where it's gonna come into play the most, I think. Dust Silver makes some incredibly cute keyboards that start at like 79 or 80 bucks. Now, they aren't premium feeling by any means. They're entirely unapologetically plastic. They come in cute toy-like colors, but they are really charming and honestly pretty unique. Just like me. <laughs> now, this keyboard, just like any, does have some flaws. So I recommend you watch my full video before you go crazy and buy it. But if you do go buy it, make sure you get the Gateron Red Switch version, as that's the best Switch version. In my video, I tried modding it, but you won't be able to notice a difference. Also, Dust Silver does sell some really cheap keyboards on their website, but I recommend you stray away from anything that isn't using the newer Gateron switches. Like, the Otemu switches that they use are pretty garbage, and this keyboard in particular is terrible. Yeah, that's not good. You know what else was terrible? When I tried to 3D print a keyboard. I started with the Bakaneko 65, thinking, ah, this aluminum case is a little bit lame. I just got a new 3D printer. Let me try and 3D print something. It took a lot of trial and error, but 3D printing my own keyboard was actually very, very fun. And it could be an option if you're on a crazy budget because you only need to buy the PCB and plate and then 3D print the case yourself and it'll save you a little bit of money if you already own a 3D printer. <laughs> now, it was incredibly scuffed. The case didn't look perfect, but I was really proud of it. This was definitely one of the most challenging and creative videos that I did last year. And I do think you'll really enjoy watching it because some of my struggles are insane nola please but what i wasn't expecting was how good it was actually going to be like Now, something that I didn't enjoy was building Lego. However, the keyboard that I built out of it was incredibly enjoyable. This is the KBD Craft Atom. It starts at like 60 bucks for the bare bones and 100 bucks for the kit, which I recommend you get the kit. And it's a keyboard that you fully build yourself. Honestly, if you're into Lego, this type of thing is a one-of-a-kind experience, and you genuinely should check this out. You can save 5% with code HIPPIO, by the way. Now, it's definitely not the most durable keyboard. If you get mad and slam it, it will break apart. It is most definitely a novelty. However, the included switches are quite nice and it's a Lego keyboard. It's cool, cool Lego keyboard. There you go. I don't care about plastic. Now, keycaps are a really divisive part of the keyboard hobby, and I definitely looked at quite a few keycaps this year. As always, my budget favorite is this XDA Profile B keycap set that comes in at like 20 to 25 bucks. The colors are nice, it's pretty, it's cute, what more do you need? Oh, you need GMK? Hmm. Well, over the last year, GMK, who makes some of the nicest keycaps, has actually become more widely available from places like drop.com. Novel Keys and Omnitype are also offering in-stock GMK sets. There's also my classic favorites, like the Idabel Blue Cat keycaps, a bunch of different keycap sets that you can get from Akko, although beware, some of them are clones. And my personal favorites of 2023 were just cheap keycaps that I found on Amazon, most notably from Sumgzin. In general, I could find these keycap sets for like 40 bucks, and they're of about the same quality as any of the other cheap keycap sets that anyone will sell you. They aren't perfect, but they get the job done. I mean, on that Zoom build, I was using these cheap Sumgazin keycaps. However, as I said before, it's all preference, so my favorites might not be your favorites, but you know what should be your favorites is Polycaps Hippo. This is my own Dysub PVT keycap set, so you get those thawky sounds when you type. They come in at $79.99, so they're not the most expensive or the most cheap. However, it does come with a ton of keycaps, like the full novelty set. For quite a bit cheaper at $59.99, I have Hippio Caps Jungle, which is my very budget plant-themed keycap set. So if you're into plants like me, yes, I have over 200 houseplants, then that could be for you. But I think my general 2023 consensus for keycaps is a lot of stuff is more available, a lot of stuff is going on sale more, so keep an eye out and just look for sets that seem interesting to you and go for them. Now for switches, it's kind of the same deal as keycaps where it's totally preference, so take everything I say here with a grain of salt, or a grain of lube, I guess. Now I'm gonna give you a couple of different ideas for switches, and as always, there's the standard like Gateron Box inks and you know, JWK switches that are perfectly acceptable, but Wuche switches kind of remain my favorite throughout all of 2023. You know, back in the day, we used to lube switches where we by hand took every switch apart and lubed the switches and made them feel smoother and uh, 
Yeah, that's a waste of time now. Honestly, the number one thing I am perfectly okay with leaving in the past is lubing switches. With switches like the Mirandis and the Moon V2s from Kinetic Labs that are relatively affordable at like 45 for building a whole board, you kinda just don't need to because the factory lubing is so good and you'll save so much money by not buying all of the lubing supplies that you can buy a more expensive switch. Now in general, I recommend the Wuche series of switches because they're so versatile. They have tactiles, linears, silent switches, etc. But I do think the Mirandis are the best of all of their switches. But it's all preference, so I recommend you buy a couple switches and you try them out and you see if you like them and go from there. If you're looking for some switches that are even cheaper though, well, maybe you could go with Akko and get some of their switches that say that they're lubed. Akko makes super consistent switches and I generally like them quite a bit. There's also a ton of other different switches like JWKs and Gateron box switches and Oil Kings and all so many good switches in 2023. But let's get back to keyboards because this is weird and uh, this is weird and uh, this is weird. Now, MeKit makes some very strange keyboards and honestly, I love their design language. Their keyboards are all relatively good stock. They have some very interesting switch options and why does that look like a Game Boy? They aren't necessarily the best value or the best quality or the best like performance, but they are very unique. So if you're someone that likes a unique thing on your desk, then I recommend you take a look at the Mii Kit boards because I took a look at them and I enjoyed it. One example is the MK72 that starts at 99 bucks and is literally like a Game Boy. Their Holy Panda tactile clones are pretty good. And with everybody putting a focus on linear switches lately, it's nice to appreciate a tactile switch every once in a while, you know? But honestly, it's keyboards like these that keep me enjoying the keyboard hobby because they don't exist for super practical reasons. They exist because they're fun. Now, I'm a certified gamer, I've played thousands of hours of RuneScape, and I'm pretty into gaming. gaming. And holy cow, was last year a good year for gaming and custom keyboards. Well, not me, I'm, I'm still not good at gaming. Now, the number one question I always get asked is, what's the best keyboard for gaming, Hippio, and why is it the Wooting? And for most of last year, that was technically true. Now, if you're brand new to keyboards, the Wooting is like a normal keyboard, except it's not because it uses magnetic switches. It's also 175 bucks for a plastic keyboard. Now, believe me when I tell you that the trend for 2024 is going to be Hall Effect or magnetic switches like these. The main reason being is that they can technically say that they're the best for gaming because of features like Rapid Trigger, which resets the switch's actuation on the upstroke. Now, this is a feature that's really overpowered for games like Osu and um, games like Osu. But please believe me when I tell you that most of gaming keyboards are just marketing. Now sure, there might be some latency differences between a custom keyboard and a gaming keyboard, but nowadays we're seeing custom keyboards actually fix that. Also, we're seeing a lot of people start to make Hall Effect switches. My biggest problem with the Wooting is that it's literally impossible to get it sounding good. Like I even built it a wooden case and it still sounds not that great. Yeah, I made a whole video on that challenge. That was a very interesting one. But with all the competition that's about to appear this year, it's going to get interesting. And one of those competitors is the Boog. Now for $220, the Boog is an in-stock, full aluminum, fully built, Hall Effect keyboard. It's got a millisecond of latency, and these Gateron switches are way better than the Lecker switches, holy moly. This is actually by the same people that made the Zoom 75, so if that gives you anything to go off of, this thing is very, very good. It still has a little bit of that characteristic magnetic switch chatter that I don't think will ever go away, but... It is by far the best sounding and feeling Hall Effect keyboard I've ever tried. Although I might have some better later this year, stay tuned for those. But yeah, if you want a premium Wooting, this is probably it. Granted, the software is not going to be anywhere near as good as Wooting's, and I haven't fully tried it yet, but there you go. Now, as far as other gaming keyboards go, most of them are just a bit overpriced, like this ROG Scope 2. I mean, don't get me wrong, Asus has definitely started to make gaming keyboards good, which is kind of insane, I didn't think I'd ever say that, but you're still paying the gamer tax. However, it does have a numpad, and uh, some of you really like numpads and cannot give up the numpad, so there you go. 
Also last year, something happened that I never thought would happen, and that was Razer made a custom keyboard. Can you believe that? They actually listened to me and made a custom keyboard. Now it had some problems, but its tactile switches that it comes with are very smooth and factory lubed and were very impressive. Granted, most gaming keyboards don't come with tactile switches, so this was really, really refreshing. Now, it was a little bit overpriced, and it was a little bit lackluster. I mean, like, plastic case, basically. That's kind of boring. But hey, they put gaskets in it, and foam in it, and uh, maybe in two years it's gonna be really good, guys? Maybe? All jokes aside, though, when you actually take this thing apart and fully mod it by replacing the switches and the keycaps with Mirandis and some Gazin, of course, it kind of turns into like a stealthy gamer beast. Granted, I did also fill it with kinetic sand because I'm incredibly unhinged, but hey, that's the spirit of keyboards, baby. This is the type of thing we're having fun. But it just means that with a little bit of love, you can kind of make any keyboard decent. Well, except for the Wooting. But just listen to this. Now, most gaming keyboards are just kind of bad custom keyboards, and one that almost bridged that gap was the ROG Azoth. It had a much more interesting aesthetic, but most importantly is earlier last year, they replaced it with the snow switches as an option, which are some very, very good factory loop switches. So even though it's a bit overpriced, if you prefer it, you could now get the ROG Azoth and have it be a pretty thawky keyboard. I made one with plants. Here's an interesting one. It's a keyboard that I genuinely expected to hate, similar to how Nola eats this box. This is the Low Free Flow, and it's a low profile 75% keyboard. It starts at 159 bucks, so it's a little bit expensive, but it does feel quite premium. What actually blew me away with this one was how genuinely good it felt to type on. Like the switches that they chose were well factory lubed, the keycaps felt nice and not too tall or not too scooped, and it left me really appreciating low profile keyboards. By the way, I bought the Nufi keyboards because you guys kept asking, so a video on that later this year. I actually found myself using this thing throughout the year as a mini little travel keyboard. I'd set it on top of my laptop and use it instead of the kind of gross Razer laptop keyboard. It's also incredibly thin and light, which is really nice. Over the last year, something really amazing has happened. Keyboards have gotten cheaper. And one example of that is the Sense 75 that originally retailed for way too much money, but now you can get the bare bones for 99 bucks. Sometimes when it's in stock because it keeps selling out because it's so popular. It's a keyboard that needs modding, but if you mod it, it can sound so good. But that's not the best value because later in the year, I got to try some pretty crazy stuff. Now, one example of this is the SeaDo V75, which starts at 139 US dollars. I know it's a little bit more expensive, but they also have a 65% version and a numpad. But wait, did I tell you that they also come pre-built? Ignoring this version with the blue keycaps because I made that myself. They come really well pre-lubed, they support VIA, they have a little screen option if you get the bare bones version or a knob if you get the non-bare bones version. They're also wireless, which is a great touch. So if you like the retro aesthetic, then I recommend checking these out. Speaking of checking out, one of the first things I looked at in 2023 was the MonsGeek M1. This board needs some basic stuff like a force break mod, but once you do, it looks incredibly premium and also sounds incredibly premium. Now, it's $99 for the bare bones version, so you'll end up spending a little bit more than something like a SeaDo if you decide to build it out yourself, but it's a great place to start if you want some nice freedom. Hey, do you hear this? No? Oh, that's because this keyboard is silent. Now, silent switches are also all the rage now that they've actually been factory looped well, and some pre-built boards like the Vermilo Manilo Bluebell definitely give you an easy way to achieve a silent keyboard. This board is not modding friendly, but wow. 
Another example of a silent pre-built is a ton of stuff from Epomaker with their sea salt silent switches. And silent keyboards are definitely a great offering if you don't want to bother everyone around you with how good your keyboard sounds, because maybe they don't want to hear it. It's okay. All right, all of you have patiently waited. What are the best budget keyboards that I looked at last year? Now, this list isn't fully comprehensive, I'm not keyboard Jesus, but the Keychron V series is still a solid contender. As of writing this, it's like 60 to 70 bucks for a pre-built version of the V series, or like 50-ish bucks for the bare bones. Listen to this. They aren't perfect by any means, but you see what I mean by the it's good enough type of thing? Like, if you're on a super omega budget, you can start with the Keychron V series, then get some nicer switches later, then get some nicer keycaps later and then upgrade your board. Or what if you didn't because you were on a crazier budget? Well, that's where the GMK67 comes in. And I did build this board entirely with AliExpress. Now you have to source all the parts yourself, but if you're on a tight budget, building a keyboard entirely like this by yourself will be a better end result. Now it has way worse firmware, but the GMK67 is no slouch. When modded, this thing is nice. If you're incredibly lazy, there's pre-built Epomaker versions like the Epomaker EK68, but honestly, this is a way worse value than just building it yourself or just going for like a Keychron V series. I mean, come on. Now this is probably the moment you've been waiting for. What is the best budget keyboard? And that's totally subjective. But this is the best that's in stock if you want like a 65%. And you're on a crazy budget and you don't care about firmware and there's a million caveats, but whatever, all right, whatever. This is the Womier SK71 or Xiangmang SK71 or the Yunzi AL71. They're all the same keyboard and they're all incredible. It's an aluminum frame with a little RGB pass-through window. It's wireless, it comes with keycaps and foam, and honestly, this thing is a crazy value package. At 90 bucks for the full build, it kind of destroys everything else in its price bracket. But that's okay, because some good competition is very good. The linear switches that come with it are surprisingly smooth, the gasket performance is lackluster, but hey, it's there. And if you shop around enough, there's a ton of different color options. And then don't even get me started on modding it. Once you add a couple layers of tape, it just sounds absolutely poppy and lovely and glassy and thawky and uh, I'm, think I'm forgetting words. Now for all the certified broke boys out there, this one's for you, and it's gonna be a keyboard that is my least favorite I looked at all of last year. And that's the Mage G60. Starting at 25 bucks, this thing is disgustingly cheap, and it definitely reflects that in its performance. Now I challenge switch and click to mod it. And that ended up costing as much as a Keychron V1. So, uh, yeah. I think the moral of the story is there's a million keyboards out there that are interesting, and there's a million more I need to try. But hey, last year I tried 60 for you, so you don't have to. Maybe this year I'll try 100. If you need any additional help or have any additional questions, then join my Discord or post a super thanks on this video, and I'll try my best to respond. Bye.